Batgirl shows off her moves. Here's your look at the Mattel Batman Missions True Moves Batgirl. With a package that sports lifelike posing. A big thank you, by the way, to viewer Bill, who was nice enough to send True Moves Batgirl my way. First thing we're going to do is figure out how tall True Moves Batgirl is. True Moves. It's ridiculous. Stopping the tape measure right to the very top of her cowl. That's as good of a place as any. You're looking at a figure that stands 10.6, a rather tall figure, 10.6 inches in height, which works on centimeters to be 27 centimeters exactly, Bunkos. And because I'm all about size comparisons, there's the True Moves Mr. Freeze, which ended up actually being a variant Mr. Freeze. One of the viewers had commented down below that they had the original uh, colored Mr. Freeze, the regular traditional classic colors. So this one happens to be a variant darker colored Mr. Freeze. But there's nonetheless a size comparison between True Moves Mr. Freeze and True Moves Batgirl. And also while we're at it, speaking of Batgirl, here I have the regular Batman Missions standard release Batgirl. There she's down there. Doesn't definitely have the same coloring, that's for sure. I actually liking the coloring on this smaller figure, this kind of dark, kind of purpley blue. Um, of course, the True Moves Batgirl is much taller and for, well, obviously for comparisons, her color scheme is a little bit more brighter, vibrant purple, sort of uh, akin to like the uh, 66 Batgirl from the classic Batman animated series. Uh, classic series, not the animated series. And then last but certainly not least, it was just another comparison. I just happen to have her kicking around, hanging out with Mr. J, getting in trouble. You know what she's all about. Uh, there's the Harley Quinn right there. Some of them a little bit trickier to stand than others, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how tall True Moves Batgirl actually is. No, no, I didn't remove all of them. I decided to keep Batgirl here in place for the time being because, again, I really did like this one a lot. Its biggest culprit, the same problem that many of these figures have, is the fact that they don't have split legs. They rectify that, but they only rectify that on the larger True Moves. I swear it sounds like a Corey Haim 80s movie. Um, unfortunately, again, the smaller ones didn't have that. I'm, you know, again, at the end of the day, I kind of wish that they would just remove one of the lines altogether, save the plastic material, say, on a larger True Moves, and just give the smaller figures posability. I know kids love tall figures, some kids at least do, but still I kind of can't help but think these figures would fare so much better if they had better leg articulation. Again, I kept the two in frame so you guys you can see the difference between the two. Like if you even look at the head sculpts, the head sculpts look like they are identical. I know somebody is like, no way, they're, there's no way they're identical. They do look like they're the same mold, but just drastically painting one differently from the other, you can see that this one really far far exceeds better head sculpt paint wise when it comes down to comparing the two like this one does look good but you have to admit it's a little bit more realized on the larger scale figure other than that i don't think much is carried over i mean it does look like the utility belt is possibly a carbon copy uh it does seem like perhaps now this one doesn't have the ab the waist split that just happens to go through the abdomen I mean, like, looking at the two, it seems like possibly they'd be making use of the exact same mold. Even, like, as we go further down the legs, the legs do look like they're a little bit different. They went for a different design here versus what we had right here. But it looks like maybe from the top torso, the torso up, I should say, it does look like it's the same similar figure mold. Now, this one also did have the peg holes on the back for that kind of... It was ridiculous, but still kind of cool. I think it was like a zip line. This one doesn't have that. Instead, it just gets a regular cloth treatment. It's interesting the way that they cut the cape. It actually isn't just so much an angle. It almost looks like it's deliberately shaped almost like an M, which doesn't quite make much sense. But I do like, at least at the very least, that they used a real fabric cape instead of those ridiculous plastic capes. Again, I really do like the head sculpt. The head sculpt, sculpt is much better than the smaller scale figure. Usually is the argument that the larger, bigger figures, they have a larger canvas to work with so the paint can get a better clean job on there without it 
coming across with the QC imperfections. Often at times it's the larger scale figures that do better with quality control paint wise than the smaller figures do and it's just it's obvious the reasoning why they would do that. Um, again I like the head sculpt. The head sculpt's really pretty on this one. She has the flowing hair that kind of flows off to the one side as you can probably guess it that does limit some posability. It's always that one little bit of hair that always gets in the way of things, doesn't it? Well, this one unfortunately does cause the head to get stuck. Sort of a little obstacle along the way, preventing the head from fully rotating all the way around. Uh, paint is very marginal on this one. I mean, there's really very little paint. In fact, it seems also that they just used plastic as a swappable means instead of actually painting anything. So things like gloves, the gloves are just sculpted plastic. They've pegged the glove in as a brand new mold. They've molded this all yellow and they've molded this all purple and they've simply just pegged the two together. It is jarring. I mean, it's sort of the same jarring thing that I had problems with the smaller figure as well. There's really no cut and dividing line where it would say, well, this is a glove. I mean, really, in theory, this line right here could serve as the stopping point for where that glove should end. But again, that would then involve them having to paint this part or sculpt the whole thing in purple plastic and recolor this part in yellow. And you know, they're not going to do that to, for cost saving measures. Same thing also said for the boots. The boots, you know, they're all yellow, but like the boots should in theory stop right there. See the line right there and the line right there? That really should be where the boots stop. And unfortunately that's not the case. The yellow plastic carries on on its merry little way, making its way up to the knees. Again, it's just again, cost saving measures. Speaking for all the cost saving measures that this figure did end up having, one of which could have been a case where they could have saved this much bit of plastic by leaving holes on the undersides of her feet. At least then you could have pegged her into not necessarily a stand that she comes included with, but you could have at least attached her potentially to a display stand that you may already have kicking around in your collection. It's ironic that the figure is classed as true moves. It writes itself. True moves. And uh, in the sense that you can literally put her in natural posing. Not that you would actually find many people that I certainly can't do that. I could, no, I, I could never do that. But I mean, if you can put the figure in various poses, I mean, I would love to have started this review in a pose like this. Well, unfortunately, what causes the problem is because you don't have a peg hole here and you don't have a peg hole here, you're sitting all the hopes and the dreams of this successfully working on this little small foot and this little small heel. And because these feet don't have posability, you can't even like turn the foot inward to help support and help aid the figure. So as try as I might to start this review in a little bit more dynamic of a pose than simply just having her standing straight and having the turntable rotating, that's ultimately what I ended up having to do because even though she does have the posability, you can do different things on her. With her, the posability limits what you can then stand the figure at. I mean, they falsely kind of misrepresent these characters on the back of their packaging, touting them as different poses as you can put them in. I mean, they show images of what the characters can do. Where's the box? Where's the box? Hold on a second. Let me go grab the box. Such a ridiculous need to include this. Anyways, look at the back of the box. First of all, I can tell you that does not look like that's a plastic figure. It looks like they've generated that in the computer. You can kind of tell by the way the torso is so very awkwardly twisted. There's no way that that's the actual figure. So for starters, shame, shame, shame on you, Mattel. Shame, shame, shame that you're using an image that really isn't actually the figure. And then advertising this below the caption, lifelike posing, which couldn't be further from the truth. Unfortunately, with it being plastic and unfortunately being the way that the figure is just made up of, you can't pose her in anything true. It's all false, more false than really anything else. You can't pose her in like a squatting pose. You can't put her in a pose in which her leg is sort of split. I would have loved to have done that. Sadly, can't do that. This doesn't work that way. Anyways, let's look at her posability. We've already discussed her head very... Uh, scraping, 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 rotates all the way around and also does hinge slightly, slightly up and down. The arms rotate all the way around. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, elbow. It rotates all the way around. They also hinge out. 
Same as what the smaller figures could do. You can also bend at the elbows. You can also rotate those forearms back and forth. And while she sadly doesn't have swiveling in her wrists, at the very least, again, you can rotate the, the, uh, the forearms there. Just drew a blank saying that. Here is where these figures benefit from figures like this, for example. While these figures, unfortunately, could only swivel back and forth and you could bend at the knee, this is where the true moves, I gotta really stop using the quotes, true moves come into play. Again, you can split the legs out this way, you can rotate them forward and back, and you can also bend at the knee. Oh, why, oh, why do they waste the materials? This is not gonna turn into the, this end video as a bit of a rant. Why they can't save the cost Again, I understand that some kids like bigger, over-the-sized figures that they can run around in the backyard and playing with. But again, at the end of the day, why don't they just save the cost of producing something like this? Put that effort, the money in the mold, into something smaller and just have a more poseable figure. Some people have also said, well, the reasoning why they also do this too is to not detract from their multiverse figures. Figures which that are a little bit bigger than this one quite a bit smaller than this one that has all the full range of possibility. But again, I really don't think this is necessary when this was perfectly fine on its own. Take that with only a grain of salt, of course. This humbled reviewer still likes these true move figures as larger scale figures. But again, calling them true moves when you really can't put them in any true moves sort of is misleading, I have to say, especially for a character like Batgirl. Sadly, with the limitations Batgirl has to stand properly, True Moves Batgirl has instead been relegated to just standing there Batgirl instead. Yes, I can bend the knee a little bit, and I suppose I can spread the leg a little bit, but unfortunately, the figure is just not going to stand properly. She already has a problem standing straight. The heels are a big issue. And unfortunately, with there not being enough larger footprint to the figure, getting her just to balance in just a standing pose can be a bit of a problem, let alone putting her in, quote, true moves. True moves. <laughs> the figure looks good, to its credit. The head sculpt is beautiful and actually looks better than the smaller, scaled back girl that we looked at before. And I can still pose her arms, I guess, in a somewhat dynamic pose. But yeah, calling it true moves is really the injustice of it all. Advertising that the figure could be put in various poses really simply can't be the case. And then when you advertise on the back of the packaging with a character that clearly is computer generated and not the actual figure in doubt, well, then you've got a problem. And of course, any kid that's picking this own up for themselves and wanting to put it in true moves, <laughs> I love that name, true moves, you just won't be able to do it. They could have included a display stand. That would have been a fixable work around this. So at the very least, if you posed her leg in any bit more dynamic of a pose than what we're currently doing right now, at least the display stand would help support and aid the very crumbling stance that those high heels give Batgirl currently. You can kind of even see how she's teetering back and forth. So I'm going to rush this up before she falls over. Oh, now she's going to fall over because I've just jinxed it. Today, though, we were having a look at the Batman Missions True Force Batgirl with again a big thank you to viewer Bill who was nice enough to pick this one up for me. Even though this is a slightly later released figure, later released in the sense that he sent it to me and I just haven't gotten a chance, I didn't get a chance to review it right away. Some good news still my friends, if you are interested in picking this one up or True Moves Mr. Freeze that we looked at in the previous review, either of them can be found still at your local retail and toy stores. There you go, Bob's your uncle. Today, once again, we are having a look at the Mattel Batman Missions True Moves. She's going to fall over. I just feel like she's going to fall over. We're looking at, let's wrap this up. Producers tell me, wrap it up. We don't have the budget to reshoot this. All right. Thank you, Mr. Producer. Today, we are having a look at the True Moves 10-inch tall Batgirl. Pretty neat looking figure. Just wish she could stand a little bit better. Want to go back and have a look at some of my Batman Missions figure reviews? And how, says somebody from the back of the crowd, the crowd, the audience, and how indeed. There's a playlist called Batman Missions. There you go. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below. Certainly more videos and Batman mission reviews will be coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.